If you're a CAD user of any kind, odds are you're going to face this predicament at some point. Your favorite software is going to change its features, you'll get put behind a paywall, or they'll switch to a new version that you don't like, compatibility version updates and all these things. At some point, you will be forced to switch CAD softwares. You can't cling to your favorite software like the One Ring, and you got to cast it into the fires of Mount Dune. And there are some surprising benefits to being willing and flexible to try other software. It will help you be a better maker, I promise you. This has happened multiple times throughout my personal and professional life. You get a new version where they change everything up, so you may be using the same software, but they may change everything that you've known forever. Or you have to change softwares entirely because they don't use it anymore. For personal endeavors, the license will run out, you don't have the money, they increase the price, or features are moved behind a paywall. At some point, you will be forced to consider changing software. And you gotta get past this sunk cost fallacy and be open to trying new software because it will benefit you in the long run. I believe if you follow the core concepts of this video and the features I discuss, that you can get started on any CAD program within minutes to an hour. And you can be drawing parts and be well on your way. It all relates to the familiarity of the terms and knowing what to look for and the concepts in which they work. And if you know these few things, then I think you can just get started very quickly. You can easily search on Google how to do it for each software. Even if the process is just a little different, at least you know how to get somewhere and what to ask in order to get your part designed the way you want it to be. So without further ado, let's get into it. And believe it or not, the skills you gain in one software may contribute to skills you can bring to another software. Let's see how. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Now, there is a disclaimer. Becoming good at CAD goes hand in hand with becoming good with thinking about fit, form, and function while considering material and design. These are skills that you can take with you to any CAD program, but they take time to develop. They take experience and practice. You have to pay attention to how your projects go together, take note of the issues you have, and remember them next time when you're designing anything in CAD. This is inherent to the iterative process. Nothing is perfect the first time. But with practice, you can reduce the number of times you have to revise parts because you had the foresight from past experience to think ahead. I can get you started drawing a part in any CAD within minutes, but the efficiency of the design is up to you. This is called Design for Manufacturing, or DFM. This term still applies to everyone who is making something. Manufacturing just means making on a larger scale. So if you must think about it from your own perspective, just call it Design for Making. This is critical to becoming better. You can draw a bad part in minutes, but it can take a lifetime to get good. And now, the Rosetta Stone for all parametric modelers. All of them, and I do mean all of them, start with the basic geometry of a sketch. But to understand the basics of a sketch, you need to think back real hard to math and geometry from school where they mentioned something called the Cartesian Coordinate System. Do you remember this? I'll give you a summary of what you need to know about it for CAD and its core concepts. This perspective was also emphasized by being a machinist and being told about machine coordinates versus workpiece coordinates. Coordinate systems within coordinate systems. Now if you feel ambitious, go try and look that up. A Cartesian coordinate system is based in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, where X and Y represent length and width, and Z represents height, typically. These three coordinates can represent a point in space. This can be a point in space in CAD or literal space. If we can measure something in reality, we can represent its existence in three-dimensional space. Engineers use coordinates to calculate things like projectiles, rocket trajectories, and yes, CAD to define things in the real world so that physics can be applied for predicting outcomes. Coordinates are powerful and they can be for you too, even if you don't use it for launching rockets. If you take one point in space and extend it in a row while connecting the dots, it will become a line. This line is the x-axis. You can also extend the same way in the y-axis direction. These lines can go infinitely into positive space or negative space. If you fill in the space between these two lines, you will get a plane. A plane is basically a reference that is a flat surface that has no thickness, that also extends infinitely in all directions. Remember this in the CAD section later for when I bring it all together because planes are very important. This and the face of objects. Now, we finally get to the z-axis. The z-axis gives all two-dimensional shapes volume and allows them to take up space. Volume is used to calculate mass, weight, and numerous other things in engineering. But the most important thing for this video is that it gives your project presence in physical space. All CAD starts with a two-dimensional drawing in a plane. 
and renders that shape into the third axis giving things shape and volume. This drawing can be anything, any shape imaginable from a circle to the shape of your favorite comic book characters, to completely defining objects in the real world. In fact, if you can visualize laying a blanket of coordinates on physical objects using X, Y, and Z coordinates, you can define the physical space all around you. If you increase the resolution of points in space, it's like increasing the pixels on your screen to achieve accurate representations of reality. This may all be abstract, but if you simplify it to something as simple as a square, I think we can start to make some sense. A square is defined by four points on the same plane in different X and Y coordinates. It's a simplistic shape, so it takes only four points to define. If you can take something like a comic book character, it takes multiple points to break down an organic entity into smaller, more geometric definitions. When I've traced drawings in CAD, it really is just a large number of straight lines and three-point tangential curves that can define a very complex shape. So with the conceptual out of the way, let's move on to the practical. Every CAD starts with a sketch on a plane with the basic shapes of geometry. If you start Fusion, SolidWorks, Creo, Google SketchUp, Inventor, AutoCAD, OnShape, FreeCAD, TurboCAD, RhinoCAD, DesignSpark, Plasticity, uh -huh, Paper 3D, Solid Edge, and whatever else, odds are they work exactly the same way, or at least fundamentally. You start with a sketch, you extrude, stretch, or grab that sketch to give it a third dimension to define a part. With this concept in mind, you can usually find the menu to get started on for all of these CAD programs. Just look for the button UI that has circles, squares, lines, dots, anything that resembles sketch geometrical entities, and you can find it in almost any program. If you can find this set of buttons, odds are there's a button that says sketch. It should look like a little grid pattern or have lines on it or a pencil or something like that. Start a sketch and place it on a reference plane, and then you can extrude that into a design of your choosing, applying the Z dimension. There may be some ins and outs, but you can generally apply this to almost all the software I mentioned. Now there is some different types of modelers. This is for parametric modelers, referring to surface modelers like Blender and portions of Fusion or even some through SolidWorks. It becomes defining a shape in space versus a sketch. So you start with a cube and then you modify the cube and its nodes to create shapes that you want. And the intersections of the nodes are still coordinates in the Cartesian coordinate system. So it's still defined by the same methods and concepts which we started with. The one thing I learned from the Fusion is a waste of your time video is that everyone has their favorite software and you all love what you love. Everybody uses software in different ways, but at some point you will have to learn another one. And using this basic concept will get you in the right place to get you to making parts quickly. So we've covered Extrude, which extends a sketch profile into a third dimension. There are other ways that parts can be made depending on the overall shape and concept of those parts. The next one I would like to start with is Revolve. Revolve. It still starts with a sketch, as all features do, but this one you are sketching one side of a part that is rotated around an axis. So if you visualize a pawn from chess, you can draw one side and then rotate that drawing around the axis to create a round object. Revolve is great for round objects with a lot of profile features. It can be used for mechanical shafts, decorative wood turning projects, or numerous other things. The next feature I would cover is Sweep. Sweep also starts with a sketch, but it also uses another separate sketch as a path to make a sketch follow. Basically, it takes your first sketch and makes it follow another profile to extrude it along a path of your choosing. You can draw wiring this way, or maybe the rails for a roller coaster, vents for castings, or injection mold pathways. Basically, if it just follows a path, that's what a sweep is. Next one may not be in all software, but I'll broach the topic anyway. Loft is a feature that will connect sketches and apply smooth transitions between different sketches on different planes to create interesting objects. Think about it like a wire structure and you're stretching fabric around it. I really don't use this one very often, but some structures demand it. In my professional life, I've used it to make shoots for moving sand at a foundry. I can make a square at the top and make a smaller square at the bottom to move and funnel sand into a cope and drag for sand casting. I really don't think this one is as common as extrude, revolve, or sweep, but it still could become useful. Now all these are additive processes, so which means they add material to your part. They all have cut versions of the same thing, which means you can draw a sketch and either extrude cut, revolve cut, or sweep cut into material to make holes or cavities of various shapes and sizes. Typically you have a solid model extruded first, then you start to remove features to create your parts. 
Within all these features lies the essence of design, the delicate ballet that will give you great parts. This is where the work comes in. But the good news is, is that your ability to balance design features is a skill that you transfer from CAD program to CAD program. You are never starting from scratch. You still have the knowledge and skills to apply fit, form, and function to your parts to accomplish your goals. So when CAD seems time intensive and you may be intimidated by the new software that you either want to try or are being forced to try, remember that you are not starting from square one. You must remember some key elements and apply them. There will be refinement as you go on every CAD program, but the more you try, the better you will become and the easier every program will seem once you start. Today's recommended software may change and force you to try something else. Some company may come up with a better software with better features than a software you already use. Or you may be a prisoner of a paywall from a subscription service. We need to be flexible in today's environment. Mastering the basics of the designing and making will help you conquer any obstacle. I also bet you haven't thought about Cartesian coordinates since high school. Sometimes the things you don't think you will use come back to haunt you. I am an avid supporter of perpetual learning and keeping your brain growing throughout your life. I try to experiment and learn new things all the time. It's what keeps life interesting and staves off the boredom from the daily grind. There are some great tools out there for learning and that's why I partnered with Brilliant for this video. I know you've seen them on multiple videos on YouTube and I've honestly never tried it before. But there are some great lessons in their system. Currently I'm going through their lessons to learn Python in order to program some robotics on Raspberry Pi. They have lessons for that. If you'd like to review some geometry or math, they have lessons for that too. They even have an app for your phone where you can do short lessons on the fly. We have a lot of things vying for our attention these days and not many of them are beneficial for us or productive. Brilliant gives us some opportunities to entertain ourselves and better ourselves when you have a moment of spare time. So quit doom scrolling pointless videos and maybe learn something useful for yourself. Being a better maker means learning perpetually, keeping your mind sharp, and pursuing better for the sake of better. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. Learning little every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for personal and professional growth. Brilliant helps you get smarter in minutes a day. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. So turn your curiosity into comprehension with math, science, programming, data, AI courses designed to build real skills and develop your intuition. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineer, or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So don't let CAD be intimidating. Give it a try. Keep these core concepts in mind as you pursue making greatness. <laughs> Pursue shop greatness. <laughs> That's copying somebody else, isn't it? Keep pursuing greatness in making. Keep trying to be a better maker. Keep these core concepts in mind. You can truly start to put yourself in the right mindset to try just about anything. By embracing the pain and learning something new and keeping these core concepts in mind, I think overall you will come out way better in the long run. So be a better maker. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for Brilliant for sponsoring this video.